and Jody is joining us. Jody is a current Karen Pryor Academy um, student, and she's going to be testing her, for her Karen Pryor Acar Academy uh, oh. certification, or I don't know what they call it now, Jody. Certification, or you know, she's dog trainer in training, and so she is observing group class. Hi, Martha. Uh, and with this class, uh, and I know Susan is not going to be here today. They are actually doing their holiday gift exchange today when it's, they can be outside because <laughs> they looked at the weather and said, oh, can't do gift exchange with mom without, with this weather. Um, so what we have today is Susan and Amelia slash Alice are graduating today and they're all on week six. Uh, Michael and Maisie and your gang are on week three. Uh, Julie and Paul and Evan are week four, as is Martha. So let's just go over what you're going to be expecting from your homework this week. Uh, generally speaking, by week three and four and five and six, what we are mostly working on is getting those behaviors to be fluent. And fluent means when you ask for the behavior, you're, you don't have food in your hand anymore. You're leaving the food in your pockets or in your pouch. You're asking for the behavior. If you need to give a signal after you ask for a verbal behavior, that's fine. But the food comes after the behavior. So you're going to ask for the behavior. You're going to mark the behavior with a word or a click. And then you're going to reinforce the behavior. And the goal in puppy kindergarten is by week six, all eight behaviors that we work on are fluent in non-distracting areas. And I want to be really clear here because when you come to puppy kindergarten, everybody wants to go to six weeks of class and have a trained dog. And that's not the way it works, guys. <laughs> kindergarten is kindergarten. It is getting those behaviors uh, working in non-distracting areas. Uh, when you go outside, it's all going to go to hell in a handbasket. Expect that to happen. <laughs> because it's, you know, it, it, going outside is like asking your dog to write a dissertation. All right. And we have to build up to that. We can't send the kid to kindergarten and then expect the kid to write a college dissertation. Doesn't work that way. So end of puppy kindergarten, week six, we expect the dog to watch, touch, sit, down, come, go to mat, wait, and follow us when we're walking for a short distance in non-distracting areas, okay? In the meantime, you know, when you're out walking outside and you've got distractions up the wazoo, what I want you to remember is bring lots of really high value treats, reinforce the behavior that you get out there when it does happen, look for those behaviors. And for the most part, especially with really young puppies, use a long line. So this is my 15 foot line that I got for wow. Alex when she was a puppy. I still use it. Wow. I, still, I still use it. When I go to parks and places where the dog is supposed to be on leash and my dog is too, she comes when she's called, but I still wanna, wanna be able to put my hand on that leash sometimes. And I'll just put it on her, on her collar and let her drag it. And that way I have that insurance policy. Um, week three. So Michael and Maisie and you guys. So what we're doing on week three is we are starting to do two first and three first, asking for two and three behaviors in a row and only clicking the last behavior. This gets the dog used to a variable reinforcement schedule. So what we're basically doing is building the dog's tolerance to doing more and more behavior without having to reinforce it every time. And what we really wanna do is keep the dog guessing. 
So the dog is always saying, is, is the treat coming now? Or did I do it well enough to get it now? Um, the other thing that I want to talk to you guys all about generally this week is the concept of, of reinforcing the best behaviors. Because once you're past week three, four, and five, what I really want you guys to do is look for those really, really, really good behaviors. And then you're going you're gonna to make a big deal out of those. So today I was out on, out on the trail with my dog and we were practicing recalls. I was being a good girl. I was tossing the treat. I was doing recalls and she was 20 or 30 feet away from me. And I said, Alex, come. And she turned around on a dime and came racing in and like skidded to a halt in front of me. And what I did is first I like took a breath because wasn't expecting that it was really awesome recall. And then I, I gave her what's called a jackpot. And a jackpot, you know, most of the time what we've been doing with your dogs is fast food. It's click treat, click treat, click treat, or yes treat, yes treat, yes treat. And so what I did was I took five individual treats when she came skidding in and I went, oh my God, you're wonderful. And I fed her one and I said, what a good dog you are. That was an awesome recall. And I fed her a second one. Way, what a good dog. I fed her a third one. And what I'm gonna refer, this is what I call fine dining. So we're not just, it's not just click treat, okay, on to the next thing. I want to make a big deal about that do the dog, the way she came in. If we make a big deal like that, and it's called jackpotting, and we give them five or six individual treats, not here, here's a handful. Um, and, and what I want you to remember is when your kids were little, four quarters were more was more than a dollar bill because it was four individual quarters. So to them, that was more than a dollar bill. And so I gave this dog five treats and made such a big deal. The next six times she came in, she did exactly the same thing. And, you know, before I you know, lost it, I gave her another jackpot on that sixth time. And then we were done. But the key is when they do something really unexpected, but exactly what you want them to do, I want you guys to notice it. I want you guys to recognize it. I want you guys to make a big deal about it. And the best way to make, make that big deal is five individual traits, draw, you know, space it out, make a big deal out of each one that you feed, um, and then move on to something else. Because, you know, when you come back to that recall, when you come back to that, you know, sit, the dog is going to remember the boy, the last time I did this, I, I got something awesome out of this. This is how we make an impression on your puppies. All right. So remember, put that in the back of your brain, guys, jackpots, because I want you guys to remember when your dog does the right thing, the really right thing, um, jackpot it. Okay, sorry, I, I didn't mean to go long on that one. Does anybody, I didn't get a chance to ask anybody else except Paul and Julie, um, how are things going? So we're gonna go around the room. Jane and Michael, you guys, how, how is Maisie? And do you guys have any questions? Um, she's mostly good. She's learning. She has her moments right now of wondering what we're doing at the counter in the kitchen and yeah. decide that the way to get our attention is to bite your backside. Um, okay. a little, a little nip at the back. So that's, that's been fun. Um, but otherwise, so, <laughs> so, so when you're at the counter in the kitchen, I want you to tether her away from your backside so she doesn't get into that habit. Because it is that is something that is very hard not to respond to. And it is something that if you do respond to it, it is likely to be reinforcing to your dog. 
because she wants your attention and she just got it. <laughs> and so this is one of those where I really either put her on the mat and tether her and give her something to do. Remember, our, our goal is we don't want the dogs practicing those, those behaviors that we don't like. So we're going to give them other behaviors to do. So anytime you're working at, your, at the counter, the first, the go-to exercise is that go to mat. You know, don't even hesitate. Grab the mat, put it down, start feeding the dog for doing something correct so that they don't have time to think about how to get your attention. Um, really, really important because if you wait till your dog does the behavior you don't like and then you react to it, mm. then your dog is getting reinforced for that behavior. Hey, if I bite their butt, they're going to put the, the mat down so that I can get fed for doing nothing, you know? So we wanna be proactive. So pro proactively prevent those behaviors that you don't want, especially, you know, especially now, because these dogs are learning every time you interact with them, okay? Um, Alice, how is it going with Kenzie? Um, she's very active and she's way bigger than when she was tiny. Yes. Like, that's what happens. Big. Yes, that's yeah. Um, so Most she's ears get big. Yeah, she's a pretty good listener. Um, but lately for some reason she's been chewing on her bed, which is which is one of the questions I have. Normally they protect their beds and stuff like that, but I was surprised that like today and yesterday they start chewing on. So how much, how much exercise and activity is she getting? Is she, is, has her schedule changed at all? No. Nope. Okay. How old is she now? 15 weeks. Yeah. So, I mean, it could just be as they get older, they need less and less sleep and more and more activity. Activity. Okay. And so my guess is she's not getting enough. And with the snow and the weather, my guess is she's not getting enough activity. Yeah. Um, there are also some dogs who, when they're younger, never bother the stuffed animals. They carry them around, they love them, they're wonderful. And then after a certain age, they start ripping them apart and taking the insides out. And so if the bed resembles some of her animals, like if it's this fluffy material. Oh, yeah. I, you know, my golden retrievers never get a bed made out of this stuff because they think it's a, it's a chew toy and they rip it apart. I see. And this is something that young puppies tend to not do, but as the puppies get older, they do it more and more. Um, it may also simply be she's bored. And okay. so the bed is, at, is available. Is the bed in the crate or is the bed yeah. out and about? In and the crate. So, so she's ripping it up when she's locked in the crate with the bed? Yep. Yeah, so she's bored. She needs okay. more activity, more training, more activity. Okay. Okay. So it's just like when it starts to turn cold, like she really doesn't want to go outside that much, but we've yes. been pushing her to go out. Yeah, so I would be doing a lot more activities. Um, I don't know if I had this, my, my flirt pole last week. So this is one of my favorite toys. Um, and it's a little limiting because it needs quite a bit of space. Now, what did I do just do with that squeaky toy? Oh, well, let's try something else. This is, a, this is called the flirt pole. And oh. all it is, guys, <laughs> I mean, this one looks like a horse whip. And it's, it's a pole with a string on the end of it. And a way to attach a toy to the end of the pole. This one was made by the Kong company, but unfortunately they don't make this kind anymore, but there's lots of flirt poles out on the market. And you can see that my dog is already paying attention to this because as soon as I drop it down, this is one of her favorite activities. And, and again, it's a little limited. I mean, you really kind of have to have a fair amount of space, but 
you know, this is something you can do with your puppies, especially the littler ones indoors um, and sort of wear them out. Yeah. The other thing is, guys, training is mental stimulation. Training wears your dog out. So if you are, you know, bored of sit down, stay calm, I totally get it. So go onto my blog and look up some of the tricks and try training your new puppy a couple of tricks. You know, train them a brand new trick every every week and you will keep them mentally stimulated. I train her a brand new trick every week because at two years old, if I don't stay ahead of her, she's gonna be tearing the place apart, chewing it, especially in, with this weather. Um, so keep the dogs mentally and physically stimulated. Hey, Clara, how's the new puppy? Hi, um, he's good. He's, um, he's very like active, especially with Cody. So they kind of tire like each other out. So, um, a little more reluctant to go to the bathroom outside with the snow, but I think like the longer it's there, the more he's kind of like adjusting to it. Um, he is doing good with all like the commands and stuff. He doesn't really understand lie down yet. And we've like done a lot of, like every day we try to, we spend like a good amount of time trying to get him to lie down and he doesn't really go. So I guess okay. that's- are you, are you using the bridge technique? So let me, let me show you what I mean. Um, come here girl, come on, good girl. So if you sit down on the ground like this, yeah. And prop your legs up and lure the dog under the bridge. Oh, okay. Okay. That's going to make, that's going to, that's going to encourage the dog to go down. I don't want you to press down on your knees. Yeah. But I want you to make your knees close enough to the ground so that he, he has to crawl under them. Okay. And then you're going to let go of that treat as soon as he his belly hits the ground. Okay. Okay, but make sure you're not pressing down on his knees. It's just a way, you can do it with a, you, with some dogs, you can do it with a chair that has a rung down here. You can yeah. encourage them to crawl under a chair. Yeah. But with Milo, you're gonna probably just wanna sit down, prop yeah. your knees up a little and encourage him to go under the tunnel. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. Any other quick questions? Awesome, let's get right into our training. We're gonna open with a, a recall exercise. Now, you know, depending on how many people you have in the room, if you have a couple of people in the room, you can call the dog back and forth. Uh, if you are alone, I'm gonna, I'm gonna suggest, we're gonna do a different exercise this week. Usually I do the food toss recall, we throw the food away, we call the dog to us, we throw the food away, we call the dog to us. The only reason we do that is so that we set the dog up so that we can practice using the word, the dog's name and the word come, and then reinforcing the dog for getting to you. And actually the reinforcement for getting to you is playing the game, find it, because that's a fun game. Now, Another way to do this, if you're alone, is what I call the runaway recall game. And I start next to the dog. Are you ready? Are you ready? Alex, come. <laughs> she knows this game too well. <laughs> so all I'm doing is I'm making the words, Alex, come, be the most fun things this dog does. You know, and that's the goal. We cannot force our dog to come to us. It doesn't work. We have, to, we have to motivate the dog. So if you're calling the dog back and forth between you and you stand there and you go, Fido, come, the chances are the dog's not gonna be too excited to come. But if you say, Alex, come, yay! And you back up, the dog is going to be more inclined to come to you. And remember the goal is, 50 repetitions of this game every single day. If you do it right 
and you say the dog's name and then the word come and the dog comes and then you feed them 50 times a day. I can pretty much guarantee you that by the time this dog is six, six or seven months, they're gonna have a rock solid recall because this behavior is a numbers game. It is about making the connection for the dog that every time they hear the word come, they're gonna get reinforced for it. So the more times you do it, the better, but it's gotta be fun. So stand up. I want you to either do the food toss recall or the runaway recall game, or if you've got a couple people in the room, go ahead and call the dog back and forth, but I want you to be fun and happy. This should be the most fun thing you do with your dog. Please feel free to unmute because I cannot give you feedback if I cannot hear what you guys are doing. Go ahead and unmute that, Clara, so I can hear what you're doing. Awesome, thank you. Excellent. Okay. Well, we're gonna do two. We're gonna do two. Yeah, well, I want it out of sight. So Jane, down low, pat the ground. Yay! Excellent. Nice job, Alice. Excellent. Run away. Oh, nice job, Clara. Excellent. Evan Collar. Amazing. Come. There you go. Yes. Come. Yeah, there we go. Nice Maybe. job with Maisie. <laughs> it's hard to get away from her, isn't it, Alice? Maisie, Maisie. That's all right. Come over here so she can see you. I'm sorry. Bad idea. Why did you want to do that? Maisie. Maisie. Yes. Good girl, Maisie. It's all right, Maisie. Jane. Wherever you put me, you can put yeah. it on the ground oh. and run and have the dog run back and forth. Uh oh, your screen is going away. Crazy, crazy, come! Nice job, Clara. All right, Alice. Maisie, come! Maisie, come! Pat the ground. Pat yeah. The, yeah, there we go. All awesome. Maisie, come! Yay! Excellent. Evan. Maisie, there we go, Jane. Nice job. Nice Maisie. job. <laughs> Maisie, Maisie, come. Yes. Excellent. Oh, Maisie, Maisie, come. So pat the ground, Paul. Do something back up. There you go. Excellent. Nice job. All right, everybody come on back. So week three, week four, week five, week six. It is about practice, 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 and setting your dog up for success. Um, it's also about remembering not to use this command if you aren't practicing. And that means if your dog is out in your fenced in backyard and they've got a head, their head in a rabbit hole, do not use the word come. They don't know it well enough. And that rabbit in the rabbit hole is way more interesting and reinforcing than you can ever be. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a hunk of cheese or a cheese stick or you know a pepperoni stick and you're gonna walk out and you're gonna stick it into your nose and you're gonna lead the dog back into you. Um, you know, the key is okay. if we use the word come and yes. the dog doesn't respond to it, it's a little like saying, I love you to someone and not knowing the answer you're going to get. You don't want to set the dog up that way, right? You want to make sure that right now, every time you say that word, that dog is going to go, yay, we're having a great time. I know what that game is. And the dog comes running back. Now, if it's a nice day, and you've got your dog on a 15 foot long line and you're out in your, on your front driveway or walkway and the dog isn't really paying attention to much else, can you try it? Sure, but make sure that you've got your best squeaky voice on so that if the dog kind of looks past you and doesn't see you because, oh, Johnny from next door just went driving by on his bicycle, then you, your next step 
is to go, yay, what a good dog, and run away. That's going to in induce your dog to come to you. So if you say this and the dog doesn't move, your next thing is to do something that makes the dog want to come to you. And usually that's running away. And then stuff that food in their mouth as soon as they get to you. Please don't ask your dog to sit. Sit is a Debbie Downer. That's going to negatively impact the dog's desire to come to you. Also, don't use come if you're going to trim toenails, right? Because the dog is going to say, oh, oh, I know what that word's for. I don't use come if I'm going to put my dog in the crate and leave for three hours. So we want to make sure we don't associate the word come with stuff that the dog doesn't like. All right. Big, big, big message. Go ahead. Yeah, so what's the difference? When do you use come versus touch? So that's a really good question. Um, I like touch as an alternative to come. Um, I use come when I have little puppy under six months old who I am training fresh. I only use come when I'm practicing. Mm. So I have set the stage for this dog to be successful. There's nothing else going on. I've got high level treats. I know the dog is engaged with me. That's when I'm gonna practice touch, uh, uh, come. Pretty much any, anything else, I'm using touch. Hmm. Because the touch is the first thing we taught them, right? And pretty much, now most of your dogs probably like to touch and will come for, for away from most things for a touch because that's the very first little game that we taught them and it's nice and easy. And so, yeah, if they're getting into my Uggs, I'm gonna use touch. If they're headed for the counter, but haven't jumped on it yet, I'm gonna to use touch to distract them. I see, okay, so it's more, okay. more of a redirect. It's a, it's a redirect, it's a okay. redirect. Think of touch as, Instead of everybody wants to use the words leave it with their puppy, I teach leave it in graduate puppy. I tell you in puppy K, use touch. Give the dog something to do instead of whatever they're getting ready to get into. This is your thought police. Excellent question, Paul. All right. So let's work on, you know, the other biggie that we always need to work on is loose leash walking. Now, by the time you guys are in week three, we should actually be attaching a leash to your dog. When we attach the leash to your dog, there are techniques that we, I want you guys to use. Um, the first one is never, ever, ever, ever walk your dog like this, particularly if your dog is going to be over 30 pounds. Never, because any dog can pull you off balance. So we're gonna hold the leash by draping it over your thumb and you're gonna take up extra slack also over the thumb and then you're gonna close your hand over that leash. And you're gonna hold that leash right here at your belly button. Now, when it's attached to your dog, that leash should not be tight when you're standing right next to your dog. Can you get up, sweetie? Alex, come on, up you go, come on. I know, it's been a long day already. So what that means, I have the leash, it's over my thumb, I drape it over the thumb, I clamp my hand down, I put it at my belly button, and I can, wait, I can actually walk two or three feet away from my dog before the leash gets tight. It's okay for your dog to walk away from you at this point. They don't know how to do this game yet. All right, now you've got the dog and the leash in the right situation. Now you're gonna fill up your hand that's on the dog side full of food. I'm gonna switch foods here. So I'm gonna fill my hand up with a whole bunch of little tiny treats. 
So at this point, the idea is as you walk away, you're going to feed and you're going to try and keep walking when you feed. Now, we're still just trying to get the dog to come with us. So every two steps, I basically want you feeding. When you're not feeding, hold your hands up here. If you hold them out here, you're going to get a jumping jack of a dog, right? So you're gonna hold your hands right next to your belly button, both hands, and as you're walking, talk to your dog. Yay, what a good puppy, feed. Yay, yes, feed. Mark it when the dog's in the right place, yes, right? So we're going to wait until the dog's in the right place. We're going to use our voice to get the dog into the right place. What a good dog. Yay. Yes. All right. So every two steps, click in or mark it in feed, mark and feed, mark and feed. Try and make this as smooth as possible. Any questions? All right. Go ahead. Good. Good. So Alice, try and switch your hands. I want you to feed out of the out of the hand that's closest to the dog. That way, that way you're not crossing over your midline. Okay? That's it. Talk to the dog. Good. Nice, Clara. Good. Well, the leash with your right hand is a food rule. Good. Make that leash nice and loose, Alice, and use your voice to get her, her to come with you. Yeah, there you go. If you need to, you can go back to putting the food on the ground next to your, next to your foot to get the dog to come to you. That's right. Good. Now walk forward. Talk to the dog. And then put the food on the ground next to your next to your foot. Don't reach out. Put it right next to your foot. You're trying to get the dog to come really close to you. Right? There we go. Good. Good boy. Good job, Clara. Nice job with Maisie. Excellent. Okay. Now, with Maisie. Yeah, there you go. I like that. I like the fact that you walked around Maisie and kept her on your on the the same side. That's perfect. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, if we let the dog switch sides, the dog is going to switch sides on their own. So pick a side. I don't care which side you use, but I want you to feed the dog consistently only on one side. Right. Nice. There you go. I don't know who's it's. Oh, Jane, nice job. Nice job. Now, Alice and Clara, pay attention to me for just a second. Because you guys have little tiny dogs. And I will tell you that my hack for little tiny dogs is a long handled spatula with peanut butter or cream cheese. Because when you are trying to reinforce your dog, you have to do, you have to basically walk and bend over at the same time. And that's not easy to do. So if you smear a little peanut butter on this spatula, now when you're walking, you hold the spatula up here. And when the dog gets to the right spot, you can say yes. And you can let the dog lick off the spatula. But it's a yes, lick, pick the spatula back up. Yes, lick, pick it up. Yes, lick, pick it up. So you're not leaving, oh, smear that spatula a little bit more, Clara. Not big globs, a little tiny bit. You take, take most of that off, <laughs> literally take most of that off and just a little tiny smear. Yes. It, sh it shouldn't be something the dog can grab onto and, and, and munch on. It is, you want to lick. Yes. Keep going, pal. You want to really smear that around. I'm, I am like wicked cheap with my cream cheese. Is this better? Better, but smear it around. So you can, you know. <laughs> there you go. Nice job. Is that Paul or Evan? That's, that's really nice, but that's, loose. That's Evan. 
That was that's really nice, and that's hard to do inside. Let's go. Okay, so Paul and Michael, or Evan and Michael, what I want you guys to do is something a little bit different now, because you guys have got this. What I want you to do is one, two, three, sit. Ask the dog Ooh. to sit next to you. Feed okay, the dog for out. sitting. And just, come on. So take, take three steps. Ask the dog to sit. Feed the dog. Take three more steps. Ask the dog to sit. Here. Yes. Feed the dog. Yeah. Yeah. One, three, okay. Okay. Macy, let's go. Let's go. There you go. Nice. Go. They say it's oh, Jesus. Okay. Yeah. There you so go. There's a lot of steps. Sit. Baby uh, steps. Baby uh, steps. There you go. That's the truth. There you go. Sit. Wait. Yeah. The wood fall. Or Michael. There. Good. There. That's excellent, Evan. There you go. Let's go. Let's go. That's yeah. it. Nice. That's good. That looks good. Good. Excellent. Ah. Nice. All good. right, you guys. Take a break. Excellent. Okay. Everybody good. come on back. So that's awesome. Good job. Remember, leash walking in your house is a lot different than leash walking outside. Right? So at this point, 90% of the leash walking you're going to do outside is you're going to let the dog be a puppy. Let them sniff. Let them walk in front of you. Let them walk behind you. Don't put them on a let's go cue. Don't say anything. If you say anything, say go sniff. Go ahead. But keep that leash loose. That means if the dog hits the end of the leash, you need to stand stock still. You're going to act, you're going to be a tree. And when the dog looks back at you, you're walking along, you're walking along, the dog gets to the end of the leash, you're going to stop and you're gonna wait. Don't say anything, don't do anything, just wait. And the dog's gonna go eh, 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 and then the dog's finally gonna figure out this isn't gonna work. And they're gonna look over their shoulder and go, yo, why aren't you coming? And you're gonna go, yay, we're going this way now. And you're gonna go exactly the opposite direction. That gives the dog a little bit of room and more more time with a slack leash. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you're using this technique, it's a whole lot easier with a 15-foot leash than it is with a 6-foot leash. Because if you're doing it with a 6-foot leash, you're going to be stopping every three seconds. And so put a 15-foot leash on. Don't take the dog down a sidewalk. Sidewalks are terrible. Sidewalks show your dog where, you, where you're going. And so the dog's like, okay, we're going this direction. I'm going to be out front. And that's normal. Take the dog to a field. Let him sniff around. If the field is empty, drop the 15-foot leash and let the dog sniff around and be a dog for a while. You guys can all catch the end of that 15-foot leash. You know, obviously, you're not going to do this next to a four-lane highway. But, you know, let the dog be a dog. Then for two minutes, pick the leash up, show the dog a tree, and spend two minutes getting the dog to walk next to you, using your voice, using encouragement, and reinforcing the dog for being in the right spot. Okay? All right. Loose leash walking and recall, we always do first because those are the two behaviors that are the hardest to do. These are behaviors that take months to shape, not minutes. At this point, is there, besides Claire and the down, is there anybody that doesn't, is their dog is not doing a watch, touch, sit, down, wait, those, those should all be pretty, pretty stable behaviors for your dogs. All right, so we're going to play a little game. And this is a loopy training game. Thanks to Hannah, Hannah Brannigan, my favorite trainer. Um, and I train in loops. 
I should have worn my I should have worn my uh, sweatshirt for you, Jody. <laughs> my Hannah Brannigan, I train in loop sweatshirt. So loopy training is nothing more than setting your dog up to do repetition after repetition after repetition. And what it means is we're going to start by throwing a piece of food away from you. And Alex, <laughs> that's the only way I can get my dog up anymore. And when the dog turns around and comes back, because you have all the food, you're going to ask for one of those behaviors. Sit. Yes. Get it. And you're going to toss another treat away. And then dog's going to come back. <clears throat> that's your cue. Hello. Itching aside. Come on. Here. Yes. Are you coming? Down. Yes, good girl. All done. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> this is my dog being very, very lazy and saying, yeah, mom, make the treat bigger. All right. This is motivation issue, right? Touch. Yes. Get it. So it's watch, touch, sit down. If you want to, you can throw some two furs and three furs in there. So you can ask the dog, Alex, sit. Wait, don't try and do this from a distance like I just did, because that's not fair. You guys haven't learned that yet. Alex, come. Yes, good girl. Find it. So go ahead and set yourself up. Two furs and three furs. Watch, touch, sit down, wait. And again, if you want to do some two furs or three furs, where we're doing two and three behaviors in a row, and then you're going to mark and treat it, you can do that. But make this fun, guys. Make sure you're tossing that treat out so the dog wants to come back to you and change it up so it's not boring. We don't want to do boring training in this class. By the way, if you haven't noticed, by tossing the treat away, we're also getting lots of repetition on getting the dog to come back to you and making sure that that's associated with good things. Should you always say come what? to bring her back? I wouldn't, I just wait. <clears throat> you can say your name. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. Down. Down. Good girl. Good. Try not to repeat yourself. I'm not, I don't know who did it, but that's okay. Just try not to repeat. Just say it once, and then if you need to, give the signal. Girl. Get down on the ground and pat the ground, Clara. Yay. There you go. Excellent. Good job. Nancy, watch. Oh, nice job. I love watch. I love watch. Yes. yes, good girl. Yeah. Me. Watch. 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 Yes. Watch. Yes, good girl. Okay. Yes, good girl. Down. 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 Nice job, Clara. I saw that weight. That's excellent. Nice job. All right. I have a challenge for you guys. All right. Are you ready? So some of you may have already tried this. Some of you, for some of you, this might be brand new. But have you guys noticed that when you do sit and when you do down, generally speaking, we do sit from a stand position and we do down from a sit position. So what I'm going to challenge you with, when your dog comes back, yes, that's your cue, down. <laughs> Ask for the dog to down without asking for a sit. And now, once the dog is down, ask for the dog to sit.
from a down rather right. than sitting from a stand. So down from a stand and Clara, don't worry about this, you know, because the dog, I would have you sit down and just work on crawling through the tunnel for a little bit, but ask your dog to down from a stand and sit from a down. Go ahead, couple of times. Easy. Yeah, there you go, good. Now, Michael, I want you to do that again. <laughs> Michael, I want you to do that again, but don't put food in your hand. Okay. The food should be in your pouch until the behavior is over. Down. You can signal, but you can't use food in your hand. Good. Yes. Ah, you yes. still had food in your hand. Leave that food on the counter or in your pocket. Mm. I really want that food to be after the behavior, not before it. Trust me, they know the difference. Down. Now yes. feed her. Yes. Now give it to her. Yes. She did it. Then mark it and give it to her. Excellent. Yes. Yes. Nice job. Yes. Or Jane or whoever is working with... <laughs> Easy, easy. Whoever is working with that dog over there, <laughs> sorry, yeah. I lose, I lose the names. Yes. Oh, All right, everybody, come on back. Yes. So now we are going to work. So the other part of watch, touch, sit down, touch, uh, watch, all of these behaviors that are what I call my minute behaviors. These are the behaviors that we can teach. And about three minutes, but we still have to practice them. So things like weight, we've chair. done the food bowl weight where we practice having the oh. dog sit and hold still during di before dinner. You can also ask your dog to wait before you walk out a door. You can ask the dog to wait before you open the car door. And this is the kind of thing that we're going to actually use these behaviors for. You know, we don't teach these behaviors just for the heck of it. We are teaching behaviors to help us manage the dog so that we don't have to manage the dog by attaching a collar, a, a leash to them and dragging them around. All right. So things like, hey, a doorway. Okay. We have a doorway right here. And so instead of telling the dog, you know, instead of hooking the dog up to a leash, if this were an outside doorway, and then opening the door and holding on for deer as the dog goes flying out the door, let's talk about, okay, let's hook the dog up to the leash, but let's ask for a wait, open the door, and then give the dog permission to exit. Now you may only, you may have to start with the door open a half an inch so that the dog can't fly through that open door. But let's start when you are going through this week. Part of what I want you guys to think about is how you're going to use these behaviors. Pretty much everybody, how many people actually ask their dog to wait before you put the, the food bowl down every day? Excellent. So that's, that's one, you can do that every single day, guys. Before you put that food bowl down, ask the dog to practice a wait. Then put the food bowl down. If you get really, really good at it, your dog, you know, if you practice this four or five times every time you feed, you put, Alex, Alex. <laughs> Okay, it's not going to prove much if I put the bowl down in front of her. Wait. Get it. Get it. Yay, good girl. You can have one. You can have one. There. Um, so, you know, the, the point is, the more you practice these behaviors, the more useful they become. Start practicing them in the house where you need them. So if you're walking out the door, don't let your dog just fly out that door, you know, especially if you're going out for a walk. Ask the dog to wait. Open the door. Tell the dog, let's go. If the dog starts to fly out the door, 
we're going to back the dog up. We're going to shut the door again. And you're going to get make it easier for the dog. So only open the door this much. When the dog sits still for that much, then you can open the door this much. When the dog can sit still for that much, then you can, you know, make it easier. Make it so the dog can do the behavior before you ask for the full behavior. All right, so everybody grab your mat. We're gonna play go to mat game. And remember in puppy K, the mat is the cue. So we do not use the words go to mat. We are going to put the mat down in between you and your dog. And the dog is going to jump on the mat because you guys have been practicing this a whole lot. The dog is going to jump on the mat, thank you, and lie down. <clears throat> That's your cue. Thank you. And now you're going to reinforce the dog 10 times by placing a treat right in between their feet. Do not feed it to the dog, put it on the mat. And you're, the, our goal here is that every time we put that mat on the ground, the dog jumps on the mat and lays down. And now you, all you have to do is feed the dog for being on the mat. You're gonna yeah. feed 10 times for being on the mat and then you're gonna toss the treat over the dog's head so they run away from you and they're gonna turn around, they're gonna come back to the mat and lie down. Paul, point that camera for me so I can see what she's doing, please. Same thing, Clara. Good, awesome, good camera work there. You can put that on the floor if you want, uh, Clara, or you can just tilt it down. My, or I grab a mat. I don't know if we, I don't know if my mom has used a mat in the past, um, but- You know what? Me... Yeah, anything, anything little okay. that you can, she can, he can lay down on, okay. it will work. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Good. So we're playing the go to mat game, Alice. So we have the dog's mat. There we go. Nice job, Lucy. Oh, I'm loving that. And the first time, yep, the first time you can lure that down. That's okay. But the idea is 10 times on the mat for every one time you toss it over their head away from you. Okay. That's nice. There you go. Perfect, Cl Clara. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Milo's got this down. Your dog's been playing this one. Nice. All right. There you go. Oh yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay, there. Let's go. Yeah. Excellent. So remember, if you've already done this a couple of rounds, toss that treat over their head, pick the mat up. Because once we're done with the mat, the mat needs to go away. Oh, okay. This is not something we leave on the ground for the dog. <laughs> this is something that only comes out when we play this game. This isn't the mat. Excellent. But That's okay. But we're All just right. So I'm just going to, you know, again, especially for the larger dogs in the audience, um, every time you are prepping dinner, every time you're eating dinner, um, and eating dinner is also for the littler dogs in the audience too. What I want you to remember is if you set your dog up to do this behavior, they are going to be busy doing this behavior and they will be not doing all of the behaviors you don't want them to do. Um, so <laughs> Jody, you'll appreciate this. So remember my trick is when I have the dog set up at the dinner table, what I do is I set the dog up, here's my dinner table. I set the dog up away from the dinner table and I would tether 
my dog over here so that she can't reach the dinner table. So while I'm sitting at the dinner table having dinner, I have my high tech food delivery device and I set it up on the mat and I set my treats up. So while I'm eating dinner, all I have to do is every now and then I shoot a treat down the tube and I don't even have to lean over. I don't have to get up. The dog doesn't get used to seeing me feed the, the dog from the table. Basically, it's because I'm lazy. And my dog learns, oh, I got to pay attention to the end of the tube, not the person sitting at dinner. But remember, the real key to this one is you still have to prevent the dog from doing the behavior you don't want them to do. So we take that tether and we hook it up to the dog and we hook it up away from the table. So if I take this tether and I wrap it around that post, my dog can't do anything except get on the mat or walk away from me. Now she cho chooses to get up and walk away, that's fine. I'm gonna ignore that. But every time she's lying on the mat, I'm gonna reinforce it with a treat down the tube. And oops, I used to have this actually taped to my table. Um, and you can use wrapping paper tubes. Um, I actually went to Home Depot the other day and bought myself a two piece PVC tube that I can now, I mean, that's, that's a really high tech food delivery device. Um, but set your dog up for success. Don't wait until the dog does something that you don't like. Because if you wait for the dog to do something you don't like, they're gonna do it. And now you're stuck because you can't train your dog what not to do. They can't learn no. They can't learn don't do that. All they can learn is what you want them to do. So make sure you're setting your dog up for success. Any questions, comments, snide remarks? Hey, all right. The tube is brilliant. I, you know, I, I got tired, quite frankly, I got tired of bending over during dinner. I had the dog tethered, this is her that I'm talking about. And I had her tethered so she couldn't come to me and, and beg at the table. But I got tired of having to bend over. And it was right around Christmas time, because this was last year when she was a year old. And I said, what can I use? So wrapping paper tube. Um, you know, and they make, they make really, they truly make high tech food delivery devices. So if you want to spend 400 bucks, you can buy one of these and it's got a little uh, little remote on it. You could set this up over the dog in their crate and sit there and hit the button. But, you know, for free, I can do it this way. Um, it works just question. as well. I sure. have a question. We were doing this the other night and she was, you know, the, and the dog was, was like yelping in between getting fed. You know, she'd get the thing and then she, so it seemed like there was like this, it was creating this thing where she was kind of expecting the treat and was kind of demanding it. And how do you so, avoid? So that's probably a frustration behavior. Mm. And what I'm going to tell you to do is feed more frequently in the beginning. Oh, okay. Because she's frustrated, she's yelling, and then you're feeding, and now you are creating a demand behavior. Yeah, exactly. That was. And the... so remember how we started go to mat to begin with. I had you guys, it was boom, 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 okay. boom, okay. boom. And then we slowed down. Okay. All right. And remember, and what I want you to do is go through the training manual and read about the accordion method. Okay. And the accordion method is when we start to stretch the behavior, instead of going from feeding every one second to feeding every two seconds and then feeding every three seconds and feeding every four seconds. 
you're going to get to the point where the dog says, okay, I'm not holding it any longer. What I want you to do is the accordion method is we're going to use what's called a variable reinforcement schedule where you're going to feed every second, two or three times, and then you're going to stretch it to six seconds, and then you're going to go back to three seconds, and then you're going to go to 10 seconds, and then you're going to do one at two seconds. You're going to go in and out, in and out. And what that does is it will stretch the dog's ability to hold a behavior in between reinforcers faster than if you try and do it in a linear fashion. Okay. And it keeps the dog guessing. Oh, is it coming now? Yeah. Or is it coming now? You know, you want to keep, you want to mess with their brain because they will pattern very, very quickly if you use a consistent reinforcement uh, pattern. But if you mess with their brain, they'll be going, okay, how long do I have to wait? Okay, is it now? And if they start getting frustrated, make it shorter. That's a very okay. good question. Very good question. Okay. Anybody else? Excellent. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are, first of all, Ali Alice and to Susan, who I know is, is absent. This is for you. Da, 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 Yay! You will get a certificate of achievement. Um, our next um, class is scheduled for January 13th. I am taking a couple of weeks off. Um, so I, if you guys have any questions, any issues over the next two weeks, please don't hesitate to email me. I'm happy. I'm going to be taking the time off, but I'm going to be out of, you know, not doing not doing classes, but I will still be around. All right. I, so I, January 13th. January 13th. Is yep. the next. Okay. That's correct. <gasps> And have a very, oh, go ahead, Michael, question. Yeah, I just, so when, when, for the homework and stuff, when it says like week four homework, is that, are you thinking leading up to week four or after the week four? So lesson? you should be reading week three homework. Okay. Uh, and if you've already done week three homework, you can do week four. Okay. Paul and Julie, you're on week four. Clara, you guys are on week four. Um, Alice and Susan have graduated out so they're going to be doing actually week six. All right. And anybody else issues? I want you guys all to have a very happy holiday and wishing you all a new year uh, better than the last year. It's not a high bar. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you too. All right. Happy holidays, happy everyone. Holiday. Bye. Thank you. Hey, Jody, hang on a second. That's his name. Go ahead. Hey. Hey, nice, thank you nice so much. That was you. fantastic. Thank you. Um, comments, questions? No, um, honestly, that was the first full class I've ever attended, which because um, my dog is a reactive dog, so we can't do classes. <laughs> so just you can do seeing... nose work. You can do nose work classes. He, uh, he doesn't like other people coming in and out uh, of the yeah. building. So, I mean, we could probably be doing virtual classes at this point in time, which I hadn't thought of. Yeah. Um, but he, um, he, when other people come in, that's when he has his biggest problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I do want to get him into something, but, um, but to see a whole class go the entire time was really fantastic. Yeah. And it's, you know, interestingly enough, um, I mean, it, I've been doing this since March now, but it's not that different from a live in-person class. Mm -hmm. um, about the only thing that's different is I, I don't have to turn my back on anyone. Right. Which, you know, I can actually watch six screens at the same time. And, you know, I'm not watching one particular person and then moving on to the next. I'm just catching people doing the right thing. Right. and reinforce reinforcing it and because everybody's listening to everybody else's feedback it it's awesome because if yeah. i tell one person hey i really like that you fed the dog right next to your left thigh all of a sudden everybody's feeding their dog next to their left thigh 
Oh, wow. And, you know, so they're picking up on everybody else's positive reinforcement to do the right thing. Yeah. Um, and off, and I, I will admit I've even lied. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will I will say hey that was great you did xyz and nobody did it <laughs> but because I gave them what it is I'm looking for mm -hmm. everybody starts doing that oh that's great um and that's a technique I used anyway it's just it's easier because I'm not having to yell into a 1200 square foot area Mm -hmm. um everybody can hear me i i think most of the people either have external speakers or they've got earbuds in like i do mm -hmm. um any questions on you know process or yeah how do you keep your um how do you keep the schedule like how do you because you did i was keeping like so you did you know from 418 to 420, you did this pro like, how do you keep that in your? So for me, you know, when I, when I started, it was a very rote schedule. I mean, mm -hmm. every week we would do watch, touch, sit down first, and that was 10 minutes. And then we would transition to X, Y, Z and this, and, and whatever was next. Um, now, a lot of it depends on the class. Mm -hmm. I almost always start with come and loose leash walking. First, it gets the dog engaged. So they're not standing there with bored dog mm -hmm. and the dog is jumping up on them and biting their hands because of course they prepped for the class and now they have food and the dog is like, okay, let's move. Right. Um, and I almost always keep the stationary behaviors to the back of the class to the end of the class because that's when the dog is going to be more likely to do those behaviors um i will spend more time on loose leash walking and, and recall because i've learned over the last 20 years that a that's what they want the most mm -hmm. people walk into a puppy kindergarten class they could give a rat's patootie about sit down stay calm or sit down, sit down, watch, touch, which are yeah. like my core behaviors. Mm -hmm. They want the dog to walk next to them and they want the dog to come when called off leash. And so, you know, we start with those. We spend most of the time on that. And, you know, watch, touch, sit down, even wait. Mm -hmm. It's like you can do those in five minutes. And then all you got to do is use them. Right. And they and they maintain. Um, so it makes sense to, you know, do your hardest behaviors, the ones that take the longest first and the stationary behaviors last. And I, you know, except for week one people who, you know, can't get their dog to sit. So we got to spend quite a bit of time telling them mm -hmm. how to sit. Um, you know, we we gloss over that stuff. Um, so that's my filler. I've I've been known to say, well, we didn't have time for watch Dutch sitting down, but you guys know how to do that. So keep practicing it. And I'll give it 30 seconds. Um, so but it's it's feel at this point. But yeah, when I started, it was very regimented. Um, and you can talk to Kristen because she's she's seen my notes. I have notes for my interns. Mm -hmm. When I turn the class over to my intern, it's like, here's the script you're going to follow. You've heard it, but here's the script you're going to follow. And you're going to spend this much time on here and this much time. And I help the time management is important. But these days it's like, oh, yeah, what time do we have? <laughs> you see me <laughs> looking over. I take my watch off during the class because I don't want to be doing this. Right. Um, but I got to keep an eye on the class. Um, so, uh, 